Good morning. Welcome again to the Bethany Assessor Reform Presbyterian Church as we begin our day with a morning devotion. And let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, the God who has bestowed upon us new life through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, to God we pray through the power of your word that you will strengthen our souls that you will remind us of how blessed we are to be children of the living God. And, and as we go to your word today, dear God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would use these words, apply them under our hearts, lift us up in your presence, and give us a testimony of your peace. And in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, as I said, our morning reading today comes to us from the Epistle of of second John we'll be looking at verse 2 because of the truth that abides in us and will be with us forever once the truth of God has obtained an entrance into the human heart and subdued the whole man to itself no power human or infernal can dislodge it we entertain it not as a guest but as a master of the house this is a Christian necessity, and whoever does not believe this is not a Christian. Those who feel the vital power of the gospel and know the strength of the Holy Spirit as he opens and applies and seals the Lord's word would rather be torn to pieces than be torn away from the gospel of their salvation. A thousand mercies are wrapped up in the assurance that the truth will be with us forever. It will be our living support and our dying comfort, our rising song and our eternal glory. This is Christian privilege, and without it, our faith is worth little. Some truths we outgrow and leave behind, for they are rudiments and lessons for beginners, but this is never the case with divine truth. For though it is sweet food for babies, it is in the highest sense strong meat for men. The painful truth that we are sinners is with us to humble us and make us watchful. The more blessed truth that whoever believes in the Lord Jesus will be saved remains with us as our hope and our joy. Experience, far from loosening our hold on the doctrines of grace, has tied us to them more and more firmly. Our grounds and motives for believing are now stronger and more numerous than ever. And we have reason to expect that it will remain this way until in death we clasp the Savior in our arms. Wherever this abiding love of truth can be discovered, we are bound to share in fellowship and to exercise our love. No narrow circle can contain our gracious sympathies. Our communion of heart must be as wide as the ocean of grace. Error, though it may be found mingled with truth received, let us go to war with error but still love the brother for the measure of truth that we see in him. Above all, let us love and spread the truth ourselves. In this uh, reading this morning, Spurgeon has given us two things to think about. First of all, he reminds us of how important the very word of the Lord God is to the Christian. It is our lifeblood. It's where we learn who Jesus is, and how we are to be saved. It's in the word of God that we are fed. It's in the word of God that we are encouraged. And it's in the word of God that we see the sure testimony of the heavenly places shown over and over again on every page. And as Spurgeon notes, it's one of the ways that we can really tell a true Christian from a false Christian. Do they love the word of God? Do they long to hear the word of God? Is the word of God the foundation of their faith? If the word of God can be easily cast away and forgotten, then 
even a believer who may be treating the word in that way needs to be humbled and remember that this is the meat upon which we are to feed. And it is this meat that grows us, not only in sanctification, not only in knowledge, but more importantly, it grows us in our love for God. Let's turn now to our evening reading today from Ruth uh, 2.3. So she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to the part of the, of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the clan of Elimelech. Ruth 2.3. She happened to come. Yes, it seemed nothing but an accident, but it was divinely ruled over. Ruth had gone out with her mother-in-law's blessing under the care of her mother-in-law's God, to humble but honorable work. And the providence of God was guiding her every step. Little did she know that among the sheaves that she would find a husband, that he would make her the joint owner of all these broad acts, and that she, a poor foreigner, would often and would become one of the ancestors of the great Messiah. God is very good to those who trust in him and often surprises them with unexpected blessings. Little do we know what may happen to us tomorrow, but this sweet fact may cheer us up that no good thing will be withheld. Chance is banished from the faith of Christians for they see the hand of God in everything. The trivial events of today or tomorrow may involve consequences of the highest importance. O oh Lord, deal with us as graciously with your servants now as you did with your servant Ruth. How blessed would it be if in wandering in the field of meditation tonight, we should happen to find ourselves in the place where the Lord Jesus will reveal himself to us. O oh, Spirit of God, guide us to him. We would rather glean in his field than carry home the whole harvest from another place. We would follow the footsteps of his flock, which would guide us to the green pastures where he dwells. This is a weary world, especially when Jesus is away from our minds. We would survive easier with sun and moon than without him. But how divinely fair all things become in his glory. Our souls know the virtue that lives in Jesus, and we can never be content without him. We will wait in prayer tonight until we happen to come to a part of the field belonging to Jesus, in which he will reveal himself to us. Amen. Oh, you know, in this passage from Ruth chapter 2, uh, Spurgeon has, uh, like he did in the morning reading, given us two things to think about. The first thing is the blessings of providence. You know, one of the things that you know, Presbyterians sometimes are kind of made fun of about you know, is our belief in predestination, in election. And one of the words that uh, Presbyterians have traditionally not used a whole lot is the word luck. And that's because we don't believe that things happen by happenstance or by luck. That everything is a part of God's providence. That all things are for his divine plan. And so as we go through life, especially when we face hard times, when we face difficulties, when we face trials and tribulations, one of the great comforts that we have as Christians is that the Lord has us in his hand. You know, we look back at, uh, at Job and we see the, 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 just the many manifold things that he went through. And what does God remind him of at the end of that journey? That the Lord is God and that the Lord has all things in his hands. And regardless of how things may look with our eyes of flesh, we have been given eyes of faith to look upon uh, even uh, difficulties as in 
in some way a blessing from the Lord. And while for our sinful hearts that may be difficult sometimes to see, that's one of the things that we learn as we grow in faith is the fact that the Lord is guiding all things and will bring his glory to bear even out of the most awful of circumstances. And so as we go about our day today, uh, let us not dwell, of course, on these uh, on these evil things, but let us be reminded that the Lord our God is the God of the past, the God of the present, and the God of the future. And that while this present world is passing away, we have had a room reserved for us in the heavenly places because the Lord Jesus Christ has died that death on the cross and the Lord Jesus has brought us out of death and into the light of his truth. And let these uh, things comfort us today, especially as we meditate upon his word and see the blessings of his grace. May you be guided uh, by uh, the Holy Spirit today. May he comfort you in all things. And may he most especially give you eyes of faith to see the goodness of his work. Uh, God be with you today. Amen.